Hello everyone, Ken and Profit for another BlenderBranch.com tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna be doing a visual effect laser gun blast. And this is a lot of fun and fairly easy to do inside of Blender. It's just a matter of getting all the steps right. So what we're gonna do is create a muzzle flash using masking and then create a particle system for a shock wave. And then we're gonna use a whole lot of nodes inside the compositor. So open up Blender and we will get right into it. I'm gonna delete this default cube and lamp. I'll press Alt-R and Alt-G with my camera selected. And then GZ10, move that camera about 10 Blender units up, staring directly down at the grid floor. And we'll make sure we're in cycles and then I'm just going to change it to motion tracking tab. And let's open our footage and you can go wherever you have your footage saved. Um, or you can download my footage, which is just going to be a series of JPEGs, I'm sorry, PNGs, converted to an image sequence. And I'm, I'll just hit set scene frames and also prefetch. That just caches in all of those frames here. Now, if we scroll through, the, scroll through this footage, uh, we want to find where I start that recoil, which is about frame 57. So we can have sort of the blast and everything take place on frame 56, right before the recoil. So um, the first thing we wanna do here is to create our muzzle flash. And we're gonna do that by creating a mask. So in motion tracking, let me give, us, give ourselves some space here. I'll change it from tracking to mask, select new mask. And I'm just gonna name this muzzle. And we're just gonna sort of draw out a muzzle flash here. So if I hold down control and click, you can uh, just sort of draw out something like this, a blasting shape there. And I'll have it sort of curve around the edge of that tip of that gun. And we'll press Option C or Alt C to close that. Okay, there you go, that's a pretty good mask um, for that frame. And I'm just gonna hit record so that we're recording our keyframe animation. And I'll go back to frame 56, make sure it actually recorded that. Sometimes it doesn't record the frame we're on. And now for frame 55, I'm just going to select everything, scale it way down, and move that mask over to the side. That way it's not on before that blast. Okay, so we have the mask here, and then on frame 57, we want it to um, sort of expand and look like it's sort of shooting off camera. Now it's kind of tricky because we're working in, uh, our video obviously is 3D space and the mask is 2D space. So you just have to kind of keep in mind where this light would be going um, in proportion to the camera. Because we're not gonna do any camera tracking or anything like that. You could if you wanted to, but this effect works just fine if we don't, <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Okay, so something like that, just a nice laser beam. Really, you can create whatever shape you want. Um, so there you can see the animated mask effect since we have record set here. Now I'll just jump to the last frame. We only want this mask on for about three frames. I'll just distort it, move it up, and about right there, and change it around some just creating a flash of light that looks like it's coming kind of toward the camera and to the side. So something kind of distorted like that. So we can scroll through this and there you go, that's perfect. All we need for that muzzle flash, just three frames. So for the last frame, frame 59, I'm gonna scale this way down and just move it to the side like we did before. So now that mask is only on frame or on the yeah, in frame for those three frames. <laughs> Saying the word frame a lot. All right, now with that set, we need something to fill this in. So we can do that by switching to the compositor. Let's check uh, use notes and backdrop. And we need our video, so I'm gonna press Shift A and search for a movie clip node. And if we just select this drop down menu, we have whatever frame our video was on right there. If we press Control, Shift, and click, we have a viewer node in. And I'll press Shift A, add in a scale node. 
drop that in, change it to the render size. And I'm gonna change this bottom left hand side to the timeline. We'll give ourselves some space here. I'll just move the render and composite layer out of the way for now. We're just gonna be dealing with the video. Okay, so um, we need a way to get a nice color inside this mask. So what we do on the right hand side where we have our texture panel here, we're just gonna create a new texture in empty nowhere space. And we can name this muzzle. So now if we add in a color mix node and drop that in, and then a filter, no, it's not filter. Uh, I don't know where it is, input. Input texture node, drop that in, and in that drop down menu we have that muzzle texture, which is just a simple cloud texture that we created. So now those are mixed together, and we need a way to determine where this color is gonna be and we want that inside our mask. So I'm gonna drop in a mask node. Check this little guy here, and there we have our muzzle mask that we created. Take the factor of that, put it into the factor of that mix node, and there we have um, the clouds limited to that little muzzle flash that we created. Okay, we're done. <laughs> now it looks terrible, so we need to adjust it. So uh, I'm going to use a couple different blur nodes to blur this together. So I'll just go, um, filter blur, drop that in. And I'll set the X and Y value to three. Actually the, yeah, and then the size will go two. Now let's go three. Okay, and now I'm gonna duplicate this blur node, so shift D, plug in the mask back into that. And this one we're gonna go high value, so five for each of those, and then 20 for the size. And I'm gonna add in another color mix node and mix these two blur nodes together. So now you can see uh, what we're creating is an outer glow here. And you can, let's set this to add so that the, this blur node is still visible. And we'll, let's turn this outer glow down based off of this factor. Now obviously that still um, doesn't look so great. So we want to adjust the color of our muzzle flash. And we can do that by adjusting the color of this texture here. So I'm gonna go color RGB curves and drop that in. This is sort of a fun node and it's also pretty strange in that uh, it seems to be basically exactly inverted. So if I want a nice blue color for our muzzle flash, or maybe if you want a red color, you have to go the opposite direction. So uh, yeah, it's basically completely inverted. <laughs> Not sure why. And if you want it to be brighter, then you have to take the whites down. There you go. So something like right around there should be pretty uh, sci-fi-y looking. And let's turn that outer glow down just a bit. Yeah. And I think also I'm gonna set this mix node to screen. Uh, did that change anything? A little. All right. Now we can scroll through the frames and see what we have going on here. Looking good, a nice uh, blast off camera. Obviously that's gonna happen really quickly. So you can adjust your mask how you'd like, but um, I think it's gonna be pretty good. Nice muzzle flash there. All right, good. Now, um, you can always adjust things like the offset. If you want that those uh, the texture of that to be offset a little, you know and the scale, you can increase or decrease, and that just gives you a little more noise. Um, I think actually what we'll do is change that Y value so it's looking a little more like side to side action going on. Just a little, there we go. And I might turn that glow down just a bit. All right, very nice. Let's see, we can adjust this blur also. So that's, that's not as, uh, what's the word, refined? All right, nice. It's all just about tweaking it and manipulating it how you want it. Now, um, another little detail we wanna add is we want this gun to have a little light, like it's warming up 
right before it blasts. So we're going to repeat all the steps that we just did and create a new mask. So let's go back to motion tracking. And I'm just going to click plus down here on this mask. We'll call this point. And we want it leading up all the way to frame 56 where the muzzle flash starts. So I'm going to put my cursor right here at the center, click add circle and just scale down sort of fitting right around there. That's good. And our record is set. So let's just make sure that it recorded that. And we'll jump back a frame. And basically, we're just going to sort of track through a couple frames here with this circle. So you could track the point of your gun if you wanted to. Mine's a little blurry. So I'm just sort of manually doing this. Um, and the result will be just as good. So now in this frame, I'm going to scale it down so that it looks like it's sort of warming up. And then on frame 51, I'm just going to scale it way down and move it off to the side. So now it's warming up and then the blast. So that's good. Okay, so now if we go back to motion or a compositor, we can see the effect that we have if we let's just move this mask out of the way. So hopefully you're not getting lost yet. Um, we have our first mask with a couple blur nodes added together as the factor of this cloud texture. Now we're going to do the same thing by let's duplicate this mix node, shift D, drop it in before the first one. We'll take the same cloud texture into the bottom of that mix node. And then I'm going to duplicate this mask node, shift D. And we'll just change it from the muzzle to the point mask that we created. And take that into the factor of that mix node. And there we have a nice little light on the point of our gun. And we want to obviously blur that. So I'll just go filter blur. We'll go fast Gaussian and value of about three, 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 and two should be good. Yeah, very nice. So we can scroll through the footage and see that light sort of warms up and then the blast. And there's a slight, I'm zooming by pressing Alt to V, slight little uh, green weird thing going on there. I think that's because this is set to screen. Maybe if we set it to add, set both of these to add. Yeah, that takes care of that. Okay, now it's all blue. Oh, we forgot to get rid of the circle after it blasts. <laughs> So let's go back to motion tracking. And after, let's see, right when I sort of jerk the gun up, we want it to scale way down. Then on frame 58, we'll just move it out of the way. All right, now let's go, go back to the compositor. Let's see, that should have taken care of, yeah, there we go. Now that light sort of fades out and then it's gone Perfect. Wonderful. All right. Now, um, this is also the same way if you want to add some lights on your gun, it'd be the same way to do that. If you want to add a little light, just repeating these sort of steps, you can see it's, it's fairly easy. It's just a matter of getting everything in the right place. So, um, now what you see is, yeah, we're basically done with the muzzle flash and the blast. You can of course adjust the colors accordingly, however you would like it. But, uh, yeah, that part is over. Now we're gonna move on to the actual blast and kind of the sparks that it lets out. So let's go to default here at the top and I'm going to press Shift A, add in a mesh circle. I'll go to front view and orthographic, tab into edit mode, press E to extrude. We'll just extrude that up. Control R, create a, create a loop cut, scale it out ever so slightly. And then we'll just subdivide this a couple times good and now I'm going to add a particle excuse me particle system to this guy got the hiccups so I'm gonna with the mesh selected it's like particle system new particle system and we're just gonna do 1500 actually let's go 2000 2000 particles and we want it to start uh, on the frame that our muzzle flash started so in order to be able to see Let's check background image, 
add image, change it to just the camera view, movie clip, uncheck camera clip, and there we have our footage. Boy, it's a lot to get to that. Okay, so we can scroll through here and right at about frame, we want it to start about frame 55 since it'll take a while for those particles to get all the way out. So let's set the start time to frame 55 and the end time frame 56 since we want everything to sort of explode out all in one whack. And then the lifetime, we're just gonna set that to nine frames. The randomness we can turn all the way up. And the normal, we want this set to a value of six. And we'll take that tangent up to five. We might adjust that. We're gonna turn the rotation all the way up, random up, however you would like. The Brownian will turn really high to 20. And let's just see what we have so far. Okay, the exact opposite of what we want, the particles are all exploding in. <laughs> That's an easy fix. We just need to, uh, with the mesh selected in edit mode, over at shading UVs, hit recalculate. And now they should explode out perfectly. It's exactly what we want. All right, now, um, with the particle system select, I'm gonna check field weights, turn gravity all the way down so that they don't fall. And let's see, what else do we need to adjust here? Um, I think that's everything pretty much. Let's just check it from the video point of view. Yeah, nice good blast there. That's exactly what we want. All right, now we want these to emit objects instead of just particles. So the way we do that, I'm gonna to go to a new layer, go to front view, press shift down, I'm gonna add in a icosphere, and we're just gonna create three of these of three different shapes, just to get some randomness. Um, I suppose this isn't the most important step, but uh, it'll add small amount of detail, and it's not hard to do. So just kind of grabbing three different points here. I have proportional editing selected so I'm, uh, you know, just creating simple shapes there. All right, let's uh, move these all together, scale them down a bit. I'll press Control G to create a group out of them. And we want them all to have an emission material. So I'll select new material, change it from diffuse to emission. We'll go a value of six. We'll change it to a nice uh, amber color. Amber, amber, amber. Uh, whatever spark okay and you can see uh, the first one has it so let's just give that same material to these two you can do that by selecting the two that don't have the material holding down shift selecting the one that does and then pressing control L copy materials now they all share the same material and they're in a group which is great because now we can go back to our particle system underneath the particle settings we want to underneath render here Let's uncheck emitter so that that's not visible in the rendered view. And we'll go to group, check pick random, and we have our group right there that we just selected. So now that's uh, those little particles that have an emission value there. Great. And let's turn the size all the way down. And you can turn random size up just to add even more randomness to them. And yeah, it's looking great. Those are exploding out exactly how we would want them to. Now, we want to do a few things. Let's just uh, jump right to where it starts. And I'm going to scale this cylinder down so it sort of fits the gun a little bit better. You don't want to go too small or your particles are going to start to look funny. And that set a keyframe. I still have record set, which isn't good. So I'm going to uncheck record. I'll get rid of that keyframe available, uncheck that. So I removed that, good. And yeah, now that explodes outwardly, which is perfect, exactly what we want. Okay, and um, since we didn't camera track our scene, what we're gonna do is try to match the angle of the camera. So in other words, if you can sort of picture this camera as looking straight on, this is the point of the gun. We wanna rotate the camera as if it were um, being shot in 3D space. So I'm just rotating the camera and then I'll press G to grab it 
and sort of fit that. You want this to sort of match the angle of the gun. And it's kind of tricky, um, but it'll just help making that little blast look like it's more in 3D space. And that's good, right about there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with all that done, I'm going to, in our render settings, check transparent and then give it a render. Now we can see this if we go to compositing and we have our render layer in the composite node down here. I'll bring this over. So everything we've done up until this mix node is all complete. That's all the uh, muzzle flash and everything. So this render layer here is our sort of explosion that's gonna really finish everything off. So I'm gonna cut it from the composite node, just holding down control and dragging. And I'm gonna mix these two together here by using an alpha over node. So I'll just search for that alpha over and drop that in. I'll take this render layer into the bottom of that alpha over. And there we have our nice sparks looking uh, little guys there. <laughs> and we're gonna do several different things to uh, make this look awesome. So first of all, what we wanna do, we wanna preserve these little sparks in our scene. So to do that, I'm going to add in a color mix node before the alpha over node. So I'll drop that in, I'll set this to add, and I'll take the render layer and plug it into that. So now we have those sparks, which will still be preserved, and we can adjust um, this render layer that's going into the alpha over node. I'll just shut up and show you what I'm talking about. So if I go shut up and show you what I'm talking about, I don't know what I'm thinking there. Okay, anyway, filter, blur, drop that in. And we're gonna blur this bottom one pretty significantly. So let's go a value of five for each of these and a size of five as well. That's pretty heavily blurred. And now we're gonna add in a color RGB curves node and drop that in. And this is where we adjust sort of the color of that outward glow there. So we want it to be a nice bluish color that we, just like our muzzle flash that we created. So something right around there is good. And again, turn the brightness up by decreasing that white value. Yeah, there you can really start to see that glow and color come through, which is great. And it's always kind of hard adjusting this color also, what you could do is just go to the blue and boost that, and that helps. All right, very nice. So that's a nice uh, little start there to that ring effect. Now we want to add in a glare node. So let's go glare, drop that in after the RGB curves, change it from streaks to fog glow. We'll set the, th the mix to one the threshold to zero and the size to nine. So now that's glowing and I might have to turn it up to really see that glow coming through there. Yeah, okay, very nice. And um, so now this mix node up here, the factor of that is how many of those little sparks you want. So all the way down is none of the sparks and then you can see the effect that has. I might just uh, duplicate this blur node for the sparks and just do a, just a small blur for each of those just so it doesn't look so nice and Christmassy. <laughs> okay, now we're going to use the factor from this glare node as a displace a displacement for our video clip. This is really fun. So let's go down to distort, displace, drop that in after the alpha over Take the glare of this into the vector of the displace and set the scale to a negative value since we want it going in this direction. So let's go negative 30. And you can see that starts to really twist that video. We can put a value on the Y axis as well. Might go a little bit higher, negative 50 maybe. And again, these this is all blurred pretty heavily so we can really get all sorts of different effects if we change how big this blur is over here. So you can see I just set the X and Y value to two and we already get more of that shock wavy effect.
So I had that blur set a little too high. You can just sort of play with the different values and uh, the different effects you have here. But I think a value about three is pretty good. That's uh, looking pretty nice. And now what we wanna do is sort of just play around with how much of this shockwave we want and the color we want. So I'll take the factor down. I don't want it overkilling my scene. So maybe somewhere around there. And I might also increase the brightness a bit and get different results all together. Again, this is why this this effect, it's, it's a lot of, I chose to do this rather than uh, a smoke simulation because it's way easier to be customized when you do it this way. You can really adjust the color, you can adjust how much shockwave you want, and it's so much easier to duplicate if you have if you have footage where you want multiple shots, all you gotta do is duplicate this particle system and then just adjust the times that they start and end. And there you go, and you have, you have your um, multiple blasts going on there. So you can adjust all of these things to be however you would like your blast to look. And that is pretty much it. You can um, sort of see what it looks like on a different frame. I might increase the blur, go back to three. And again, the effect is just, you know, however much or little you want as far as displacement and blast. You can even get cool effects if you change it from fog glow to ghosts. I've done that for a few of my renders and you get even cooler, kind of weirder effects. Um, fog glow is more of a, um, you know, it's, little bit easier to control so that's why I chose that so there you can see that's sort of when that first initial blast explodes out I think I have a little too many too much sparks so I'm going to turn the factor of those down a bit and I think we are good now all that's left I'm going to add in a color color balance node and drop that in I might boost the whites ever so slightly take those over to the yellowish color and take the darks over to a blue and then boost the contrast here. Take those whites down a bit. There we go. Maybe increase the mids. Just some bit small color correction, kind of tying it all together. Make sure you plug it into the composite node. And that's it. That's that effect we have everything up here is our mask which is our muzzle flash and then everything down here we have our render layer and our sort of shockwave blast effect all mixed together so um i'll sort of let you see that i don't know we can talk through this again we have two masks that we created for the point of our gun for our muzzle flash and the point and we have our movie clip here so that those are added together into that as a factor of this basic cloud texture here. And then everything is put into this add node and it's all mixed together with this render layer. And that's the node set up for our shockwave. So hopefully you can see that. And um, yeah, I hope that you're able to uh, easily customize your video and your uh, sort of blasting effects. What's left now is to just pick an output directory. I'm just going to create a new folder somewhere. Um, I'm going to delete this folder later, so I'll just leave it. And you can set the resolution all the way to 100 if you'd like. And you can even turn the samplings up. It won't make much of a difference since those, particle, those particles really don't need a whole lot to be visible. Um, but then, yeah, all that's left is to hit animation and you are set to go. So I hope this tutorial was fun. I hope it was useful and uh, that you can use it to create some awesome sci-fi laser blast gun effect. <laughs> so I will talk to you in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching.